Assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> Today we will continue with the discussion about earthwork. OK, so yesterday I told you that earthwork is the most important item of the cost of the road projects because <clears throat> that is making the road level equal to the ground level. So when this is done, the construct, most of the construction work is completed. OK, and we said that we try to balance the earthwork. OK, so cut and fill should be balanced. OK, we talked about shrinkage of filling. So when you fill up the material, you have to do some compaction and because of compaction, the volume shrinks so that you have to ask for extra material due to this shrinkage. And uh, we also talked about uh, how do we calculate the earthwork? We have to calculate in volumes. And to find out the volume, first of all, we draw cross sections of the road at different stations. It can be fill or cut or cut and fill both. And then you apply average end area method to calculate the volume of earthwork. OK, so today we are going to start with. An example of how to calculate earthwork. OK, this one is was not in your. Uh, was not in your book, so I have to add one for myself. So this is a small one. But I will try to be as detailed as possible. So there are some cross sections given for the road project. The length of the highway is 500 feet. So they have drawn cross section. Okay, so I'm explaining this uh, question. Total length of the road is 500 feet. So you see six cross sections here, one at each station, starting with zero. Okay, so you have a, a station at zero, then at one, then two, then three, and four, and five. And between each station, you have a length of 100 feet. Okay, so that's why you see the notation one plus zero, zero, two plus zero, zero. Okay, so two plus zero, zero means what? Means what? 200 feet from zero. 3 plus 0, 0 means what? 300 feet from 0 and so on. OK. Uh, so we have to find out the cut and fill quantities and then we have to find out the quantity for mass hole diagram and then we have to plot the mass hole diagram. The width of the road is 30 feet. The width of the road is 30 feet and the shrinkage factor is given as 1.15. 1.15. Now we discussed this yesterday as well. So when I say shrinkage is 1.5, how much material is required to be? <sighs> now you can see. OK, so now it should be clear. I've shared again. Uh, so. So the shrinkage factor is given as 1.15. Now 1.15 means what? How much material will shrink in terms of percentage? When I say shrinkage factor is 1.15, how much is the shrinkage of material in terms of percentage? Anyone? Yeah, 15%. So uh, whatever can quantity of fill you uh, find out, you have to add it by 15%. Okay, so first of all, let us find out the quantities and then we will see. Okay, so you take the first station. Okay, 0 plus 0, 0. Now the width of the road is given as 30 feet. So you see RL here means road level. GL here means ground level. OK, so the width of the road level is how much? 30 feet. The width of the road level is 30 feet. OK, the difference between the road and the ground, one feet. The side slope, this is what we call as a side slope. 
So whenever you are joining the road level with the ground level, you have to provide a slope for stability, and that slope is known as a side slope. So the value of the side slope is given four is to one, meaning for every one feet difference in elevation, the distance will increase by four feet. Okay, for every one feet elevation, the distance is four feet. Okay. Now, if you look at this diagram, this is like a trapezoid or a parallelogram, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Now you can calculate the area of this diagram by using triangles and rectangles. Okay. You can uh, divide it into a tri two triangles and one rectangle. But there's a direct equation for to find out the area of the parallelogram as as well, and the equation is area. Was uh, a difference of elevation, okay, difference of height into average of parallel sides. Okay, you can write it somewhere if you want. So I have to take the difference of height into the average of the parallel sides. So these are the parallel sides. You see, the ground level and the road level are par the parallel sides. Okay. Now uh, the width of the ground road level is 30 feet. It is given. How much is the width of the ground level? Okay. So from the road level to the ground level, I have this much extra distance, right? On both sides, this much extra distance on both sides. And how much is this distance? There's a difference of height of one feet. So for every one feet, the distance will increase by four feet. Okay. So the distance at the ground level is 30 feet, which is the top value and it will increase by 4 into 1 okay for every 1 feet the distance will increase by 4 feet okay so 4 is to 1 and i have to do it on both sides okay so this will be how much 30 plus 4 plus 4 it will be 38 feet okay so the total distance at the ground level is 30 sorry 38 yeah 38 feet Okay, the total distance of the ground level is 38 feet. 30 feet this, then four feet increase on this side, four feet increase on the other side to cover this one foot difference of elevation. Okay, and I calculate using the slope. So if I apply the equation of the parallelogram, which I just showed you, this one, okay, the area of the parallelogram, it will be difference of height, which is one feet, into the average of the parallel side. So Road level is 30, ground level is 38. I have to take their average. So this will be how much? 1 into 30 plus 38 upon 2. How much is this? Thirty-five. Not possible. Thirty-four, yes. Thirty-four, okay. Thirty-four square feet because everything was in feet, so thirty-four square feet, okay. Now, uh, which type of area is it? You see, the road level is high, the ground level is low. Road is up, ground is low. So, is this a fill area or a cut area? Is it fill or cut? Yes. Is it a fill area or a cut area? When the road level is up and the ground level is low, do we call it a fill area or a cut area? Yes, fill. Thank you. So it's a fill area. Okay. Moving on to the second figure, the second station, one plus zero zero. Okay. So it's a similar figure. So we can apply the same equation here. Okay. We have thirty feet this width and we have to calculate the width at the ground level. So again, we have the same slope, but the difference in elevation is now 0.8. Okay, so width of the ground level will be 30, which is the top width, plus 4 into 0.8, which is the difference of elevation, plus same on the, the other side as well. So how much this will be?
36.4. Okay, so the area will be difference of height, which is 0 0.8 multiplied by 30. 36.4, the two parallel sides. Average. So how much will this be? Twenty six point five six. OK, and again. The road level is up, the ground level is low, so again it's a fill area. OK, now we can move to station two here, but let me solve the easier, easier one first. OK, so I will move to station three here. I'll do station two at the end. OK, so if you come to station three, the main difference is ground level is up, road level is down. And ground is up, road is down, this is cut area. OK, but the figure is the same. The figure, the shape is the same. OK, the only difference is instead of uh, having a fill area, now it's a cut area. So I'm talking about station three here, three plus zero zero. OK, and I will apply the same thing here. So I have to find out the width of the road at the ground level, the width at the ground level. So it will be 30, which is the, the width of the road, plus four, which is the slope into difference of height, which is 0 0.5. And I have to do it on both sides. So I just simply multiply by two. How much will this be? Thirty four. So area will be uh, point five difference in elevation plus some of the parallel sides of the average of the parallel sides. So thirty four. How much will be this? Yes, how much will this be? Okay, 16. 16 or 32? Anyways, if it is incorrect, I don't, it's not my loss. Okay, then we're moving to a station four here. Okay, applying the same uh, equation here. So first of all, width at the ground level will be, yes, yes, whatever it is. So width at the ground level will be 30, the width of the road level plus four into 0.4, sorry, 0.6, and I have to do it on both sides. So this will be how much? If I calculate the area, it will be so how much will this be? Okay, then station five. Okay, the so difference in elevation is 0 0.8. So if I want to calculate the width at the ground level, it will be uh, how much? Yeah, 30 plus 0 0.8 into the slope, which is four. And I have to do it for both sides. So this comes up to be
Okay, so if you calculate the area, the area will be 0 0.8, the difference in elevation into the uh, average of the parallel side, which is 30 and 36.4. Okay, so I have solved the easier ones here. Okay, so these last three areas which you calculated were all cut areas. The ground level is high, the road level is low, so all of them are cut areas. Okay, now uh, we have to calculate the area for station two. For that, I need more time. So let me give uh, give me ten minutes. I will pray and come back, and then I will explain the. The, how to calculate the area at station 2. Okay, so I will just uh, mute the call here. Okay, and I will be back inshallah in 10 minutes.
Assalamu alaikum everyone. I'm back. Uh, okay. Before we start, if uh, anybody uh, wants to leave at the end of the session, if it is taking, lo taking longer, you can leave. Okay, I will continue the session, recording of the session till the end, to the slides which we have covered in the other session. And later on, you can listen to it. And if you can sit, very well. Uh, I have uh, posted a form, a questionnaire for the next week, okay, for classes for the next week. So fill up that questionnaire, okay. And uh, there is an assignment, a theoretical assignment from the topics which we covered uh, yesterday on the blackboard. You have to submit on the blackboard, okay. So now I will continue with the example. I just wanted to make the announcement because some of you may not be present at the end. So we were, uh, we calculate the areas for uh, station 0, 1, 3, 4, and 5. Now we are left with station two. Now you can see station two is not that simple because it's not completely filled or it's not completely cut. You can see here the road level is up on the right hand side and the ground level is down. On the left hand side, ground level is up and road level is down. So this is cut and fill both. Okay. So because of that, the calculations will be slightly changed. Okay. So first of all, uh, I will uh, solve this into parts. I will solve this area in, in parts, okay, because it's not a simple figure now. So I'll solve, solve this area in parts. In the first part, if you look at the extreme right hand side, it, it is a triangle, right? This one is a triangle. Okay, this one is a triangle. And this triangle, the height is 0.4 feet, and the side slope, side slope is constant in all the cross sections. So the side slope here is also 4 is to 1. So if I want to calculate the area of the triangle, I need the height which is given and I need the distance, the base. Okay, so I have to calculate the base. So if the slope is 4 is to 1 and the height is 0 0.4, then uh, yeah, the height is 0 0.4, then distance will be 4 into 0 0.4. Okay which will be how much? I think 1.6, right? So the area of the triangle will be base 1.6 into height 0 0.4 into half. This is the area of the rectangle triangle, half of base into height. Okay, so half of 0.4 into uh, 1.6, okay? Where 0.4 is the difference evaluation and 1.6 is the, uh, the distance. Okay, so how much is it? 0 0.32. So the area of the triangle is 0 0.32. Now you come here again. The next shape is a rectangle, right? This one is a rectangle. And the base of this rectangle is 4 feet. The height of this rectangle is 0 0.4 feet. Okay, so if you calculate the area of the rectangle, it will be 4 into 0 0.4, which will be uh, 1.6, right? Oh, sorry, 1.6. Okay, so the area of the rectangle will be 1.6. 4 is the distance it's given and the height is 0.4. So 4 into 0.4 will be 1.6. Okay, next one is the area of this triangle. You see, this is there's a triangle here. Okay, and this triangle is going from the uh, ground level to the road level. Okay, so I know the height of this triangle, which is 0.4 but I know I want to know the distance of this triangle. Okay, so again, if the height is 0 0.4 and the slope of the ground line is given, 7 is to 1. This is not the side slope, okay? This is the slope of the ground. Okay, cross slope of the ground, so which is 7, 7 is to 1. Okay, so if the height is 0 0.4 and the slope is uh, 7 is to 1, then the distance will be 7 into uh, 0 0.4, and this will be 2.8 feet. Okay, so if the distance is 2.8 feet, then the area of the triangle will be half into 2.8 into 0.4, which is how much? Point five six. So we have uh, calculated all the areas which were below the road line, right? So this is, these are all the fill areas. Okay, so the fill area Total fill area will be 
zero point five six plus zero point three two plus one point six. Okay, the area of the two triangles and the area of the rectangle between them. So total will be how much? Two point four eight. So area of total uh, fill area is two point four eight. Okay. Then moving forward, now we are above the road line, so we are now calculating the cut area. So the first portion is again a triangle. So you see this is a triangle. Okay. I know the height of this triangle, 0.3 feet, and I know the slope of this triangle, 7. Okay. I want to know the distance, the base. So it will be 7 into 0.3. 7 is the uh, slope, and 0.3 is the height. So it will come out to be. 2.1. Okay, so the area of the triangle will be 2.1, which is how much? 0.315. Okay, so 0.315 is the area of the first triangle. Then. Moving on, we have now this one is a rectangle, right? From here to here is a rectangle. So for this rectangle, I know the height. I want to know the distance, the base. Okay. Now, how to calculate the base? From here, starting from here till here, the total width of the road is how much? Thirty feet. The total width of the road is thirty feet. I have already calculated this distance for the first triangle. Then this distance for the rectangle is given. Then the distance for the for this triangle and the distance for this triangle. So from 30 feet feet, if you subtract all these distances, the remaining will be the distance of the rectangle. Okay. So let us do that. 30 feet is total. The distance for the first triangle was. Uh, 0.4 into 4. The distance for the rectangle was 4. The distance for the second triangle was uh, 0.4 into 7, and the uh, and the distance for the third triangle on the top was 0.3 into 7. Okay, so this is the distance for the first triangle. Okay, to, uh, slope into uh, slope into difference evaluation. Then this was a distance of the second uh, sorry of the rectangle. It was given. Then the distance for the second triangle again difference in evaluation to slope. And the slope for the third triangle again difference in evaluation to slope. The so total will be how much? You subtract all of them. Yeah, how much will you get? Okay, so for the rectangle, the distance is 19.5. The height is 0.3. So the area will be 19.5. How much is this area? 5.5. Five. Okay, then. Uh, for the last triangle, and I'm talking about this triangle. The difference of height is 0.3, and I want this distance. Okay, so I know the slope. 4 is to 1. So the distance will be 4 into 0.3. Okay, which will be 1.2. So 1.2 is the height. Then the area will be 1 by 2 into height. Sorry, into this is this is the distance and into height. Zero point three is the height. So the area will be how much? Hmm. 
जीरो पॉइंट वन एट ओके सो द टोटल कट एरिया ना ओके विल बी द एरिया ऑफ दिस ट्राइंगल प्लस दिस रेक्टेंगल प्लस दिस ट्राइंगल ओके सो दिस द फर्स्ट ट्राइंगल वाज जीरो पॉइंट थ्री वन फाइव देन द रेक्टेंगल वाज फाइव पॉइंट एट फाइव and uh, uh, the last triangle was 0.18 okay so total is how much total cut area is okay so uh, this is the total uh, cut area and we already calculated the total fill area okay coming back here so i have already done the calculation in the slide as well later on if you want to have a look at it okay uh, coming towards the calculation of volume and then the drawing of mass hall diagram okay so you have to prepare a table for the calculation of volume and mass hall diagram the first column in the table is the stations okay so we have station 0 station 1 2 3 4 5 the same as it was given and then we have the two columns for the end area which you have calculated the area which you have just calculated okay for each station you will you will put the area in the respective column for cut and fill okay so if i go to the figure the first area was uh, was uh, fill okay so you see in the table the cut is 0 and the fill is what we calculated second area again fill okay so you see again cut is empty and there is a value of fill third which is station 2 the one which you just calculated we has some cut area and we had some fill area so you see values in both columns okay then station 3 4 5 all of them are cut ground level is up road level is low so all quantities are cut so you see only quantity is written in the cut column the fill column is empty okay now uh, to calculate the volume using these end areas we will apply the average end area method so average end area method means you take the you take the average of the two areas uh, and multiply with the length now the length between the areas is one station one station means 100 feet okay so l is 100 then you have to take the average of the two end areas now when you look at the first value for cut cut volume the first cut volume is zero second cut volume zero so average of zero is zero right so that's why you see zero here okay uh, you come to fill How did I get calculated? 112. First area 34. Second area 26.56. So you take their average and multiply with the length. Length is 100 feet. Okay. So if you do this, 34 plus 6.56. Okay. And then you have to take their average. Multiply by 100. How much will this be? How much? Will you, how much will be this value? Three zero two eight. Now this is in cubic feet because all the quantities are in feet, right? Cubic feet. Okay. So this is this is answer in cubic feet. But for mass hall diagram, we either use cubic yards or cubic meters. If the quantities are given in cubic uh, in in cubic meters, we'll keep them as it is. But if the quantities are in cubic feet, we'll convert it to cubic yards. Okay, and one uh, cubic yards equals to twenty-seven cubic feet. One cubic yard equals twenty-seven cubic feet. Okay, so if this is cubic feet, then how much will it be in cubic yards? Yes, 
3028 cubic feet equals to how many cubic yards? Hundred and twelve. Okay, so this is how I got this number, hundred and twelve. This is after uh, conversion. So you see this quantity is in cubic yards. Okay, so volume is either in cubic meters or cubic yards. Okay, if it is uh, all, the, all the units are in meters, you keep them in meters and you get cubic meters. But if all the units are in feet, you will get the answer in cubic feet. You have to convert to cubic yards. Okay. So if I come to this quantity, how did I get twelve? I took this area, which is zero. Then I took this area. So the average of zero and 6.34. Okay, so you will get a number. Multiply with the length, which is 100 feet. Divide by 27 for conversion. This is how we get 12. Okay, and how did I get 54? The average of 26.56 and 2.48. Multiply by 100 and divide by 27 for conversion. So this is how, how I got 54. Okay, and so on. So you see here again, there's zero. Why? Because this area is zero and this area is zero. So the average of zeros are zero. Okay. Uh, so you will get some numbers here. Okay. Then for fill quantity, we discussed yesterday, you have to apply shrinkage because when you fill the material, you have to compact it. And by compaction, you will do some shrinkage. So how much shrinkage was there? It was given in the question. Shrinkage is 1.15. That means the material of shrinkage should be increased by 15%. The material, sorry, material of filling should be increased by 15%. See, 1.15 means what? I'm increasing by 15%, okay? So you take 112 and you calculate the 15% of 112, it will be 17, okay? So 112 into 0 0.15 will give you 17, okay? Similarly, if you take the 15% of 54, it will be 8. 15% of 5 will be uh, 1 and so on. Okay. So each time you will uh, take this number, the fill number, and you multiply with 15%.15. You get the shrinkage quantity. Okay. And this will, this will only be applied to fill. Okay. This should be understood. You don't apply shrinkage to cut because cutting means the money you are you are excavating the material. You don't need to do compaction for for excavating. Okay, we have to do compaction for filling. So shrinkage is only applied for fill material. Okay, not cut material. Then you will add how much how how much will the total fill the actual quantity which you calculated and the shrinkage. Okay, so 112 plus 17, 129 total fill. 54 plus add 8, 62 total fill. Okay. So you calculate fill, apply shrinkage, and then you calculate the total number. Okay. Then the next two columns are for net quantities, net volumes. Okay. What is net? You do cut minus fill. You have to do cut minus fill. So you have a cut column here for volume, and you have a total fill column here. Use this one. Okay. Total. So you do cut minus fill. So cut is zero here. Fill is 129. So cut minus fill will give you minus 129, right? So minus will means that you will write it in the cut column. Oh, sorry, fill column. Minus means you will write it in the fill column. Okay. You come here, cut is 12, fill is 62, 12 minus 62, minus 50. So again, minus means you will write in the fill column. Then you have uh, 41 and 5. So 41 minus 5 will give you 36, and it is positive. So we write in the cut column. Then 66 minus 0, positive 66, you will write in the cut column. Okay. So you calculate net quantities. And if it is negative, you write in the fill column. If it is positive, you write in the cut column. Okay. Then the last column is the mass hall ordinate. MHO means mass hall ordinate. The, the thing which you will plot in the mass hall diagram on the y-axis. Okay. Now mass hall ordinate is calculated as the cumulative net quantity. So you already have the net quantity. You have to do the accumulation. Okay. So first number will always be zero because at the first station you cannot have volume because volume needs length. So at the first station there is no length. So the volume is zero. This is you always start the last column with zero. Okay. Now the next quantity will be zero. Okay. 
plus what whatever you have here in the net quantity. So zero, and I have 129 fill. So fill is minus. So zero minus 129. You get minus 129. Okay, the next quantity will be this number minus 129 plus the net quantity. The net quantity is negative again, fill. So minus 129 minus 50 minus 179. Then 143. How did I get 143? Minus 179. Now this one is filled. Oh, sorry, this one is cut. So positive, right? So minus 129 plus 36. So it will be minus 143. Then minus 143 plus 66 minus 77. Then minus 77 plus 85 gives you plus 8. Okay. Understood? Any questions? Great. Okay. So now I come to mass hall diagram. On the x axis, I will plot the stations. Okay. Starting with station 0, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. And on the y axis, I will plot the last column which I have just calculated net cumulative quantity, this quantity. Okay. So the first number is 0, then it, it is, these are negative numbers, then the end it goes to positive. So you can see here, same thing is happening with the diagram. Starts with 0 negative negative and the last number is positive so this is the positive number here okay so if this is clear there's another example from the book which is similar to this one the only difference is in this example they did not calculate the end area they directly gave me the end areas okay this is the difference between this example and the one which i have just solved we calculated the end area in this example but in this one they did not calculate the end areas okay so they directly gave me the end areas so again, this is a table for plotting the mass hall diagram. So you see the first three columns were given. OK, the first three columns were given. The stations were given and the area of cut and fill at each station was also given. So somebody plotted the cross sections and somebody calculated the cut and fill quantities in uh, square feet. So you can see here there are 20 stations. So if each station is 100 feet, 20 means 2000 feet. 20 means 2000 feet. OK, so for each station, the calculated cut and fill both. So you can see in most of the stations, we have bo both quantities. OK, so many stations were cut and fill both. OK, then you calculate the total cut volume, which will be, how did they get the nine? You take the average of three and two, multiply with the length, which is 100 feet, and divide by 27 for conversion. So you get nine cubic yards. Same thing with fill. Take the average of 18 and 50, multiply by length, which is 100 feet, divide by 27 for cubic yards. Okay. So the same thing which we did in the problem. Here, the shrinkage is given as 10%. In the question, see here, shrinkage is given as 10%. So whatever fill quantity you calculate, you multiply by 10%, you will get the shrinkage value and the total fill will be the fill which you calculated plus shrinkage. So you see 139 is what? 127, 126 plus 30. OK, then you have the net quantities here in the next two uh, columns. OK, so how did I get 130 here? The cut is 9, the fill is 139. So 9 minus 139 will be minus 130. So you see 130 in the minus column, fill column. Then uh, 7 minus 299 will give you again minus 292. Okay, you come here, this uh, number, you have uh, 120 minus 132. No, sorry, 157 cut minus 132 fill. It will give you positive 25. So you wrote it in the cut column and so on. In the last column, you have to do cumulative starting with 0, as I told you earlier. So 0 minus 130 will give you minus 130. Then minus 130 minus 292 minus 422. Okay, and so on. So you have negative numbers here, then some positive numbers. Then in the end, it goes to negative again. Okay. Uh, does the 8 mean that we have more material? No, no, you need more material. Which 8 are you talking about?
no eight means uh, you mean column eight column eight you mean column eight first example yeah yeah yes you have more cut material on the site so you excavated more and you filled less so eight cubic yards of material is still on the site you have to dispose it you have to throw it somewhere Okay, it's, it's the same. Uh, I'm continuing with the same example. I have to explain a few things. Yeah, you can leave as I said. The session is recorded. I recorded the previous session as well. So if you want to listen later on, you can. And make sure you fill the form. Okay, I have to decide about the schedule of next week. Fill the form and look at the assignment on Blackboard. Okay. Same thing goes for everybody else. Okay, if you want to leave. So coming back to this question again, so this one is a repetition of what we just did. OK, the, the table is made in the same manner and then you see the mass hall diagram. So on the X axis you have stations on the Y axis you have mass hall ordinate. So it was negative, then one to positive, then negative again. OK. OK, now uh, there are a few points which you have to understand from the mass hall diagram. OK, so from the mass hall diagram, you can understand few things related to the uh, earthwork material. OK, for example, when the mass hall diagram is in the negative region, when it is below the zero line, that means you have more fill, right, than cut. Fill was negative, right? So if the diagram is in negative region, that means fill is more than cut. So in this region between A dash and D dash, you have more fill. And when the diagram is in the positive region, that means cut is more than fill. That's why, that's why it became positive. So between D dash and E dash, cut is more than fill. OK, similarly, if the diagram is going downward, downward means what? That you are adding fill, right? The sections are coming, the fill sections are coming. So sections are negative, right? So when you add negative quantities, you will go down. So when the slope of the diagram is downwards, and the slope of the diagram is downwards, then the uh, fill sections are coming. When the slope of the diagram is going upward, that means the cut sections are coming. Okay. And uh, similarly, when you reach the negative point on the diagram, this is the negative point, right? Oh, sorry, the sorry, negative not uh, the minimum point. When you reach the minimum point on the diagram, so before the uh, before the diagram, oh, sorry, before the point, what was happening? It was coming down, right? It was coming down. So that means what? These were the fill sections. After this point, it it started going up. So when it starts going up, it it means what? These are the cut sections, right? So the minimum point is the end of fill and the start of cut. And same thing for the positive point, the reverse for the positive point. F dash, what is happening before F dash? The diagram was going up. So these are cut sections. And after F dash, the diagram is going down. So these are fill sections. OK, so the maximum point is the end of cut and the start of fill. And the minimum point is the end of fill and the start of cut. OK. Now, if you want to calculate the material quantity required between any two points, for example, I want the quantity of material required between C dash and K. OK, so C dash is any point on the highway and K is another point on the highway. How much material is required between C dash and K? So I will take the ordinate at C dash, whatever the value there is, and I will take the ordinate at K and I will take the difference. So when you take the difference of Y values and C dash and K, it will give you the material required between C dash and K. So for example, at C dash, I have minus 1200 and at K, let's say I have minus 800. So the quantity required between these two is 400, right? Minus 1200 minus 800. Quantity required between them is 400, okay? So this is how you find out quantity required between any two points of the highway. Take the difference of the Y values from the mass on diagram, okay? Then there's a concept of balance line. Now, yesterday I told you balance earthwork means when cut is equal to fill. 
when cut equals becomes equals to fill, that is an indication of a balance at work. Okay, so you see when cut becomes equals to fill, so fill is negative, cut is positive. So when both are equal, their net will be what? Zero, right? The net will be zero. So you see in the diagram, we have three points here where the net is, is becoming zero. A dash, D dash, and E dash. At all these points, the quantity is becoming zero, right? So these lines, A dash to D dash, and D dash to E dash, are known as balance lines. Why we call it balance lines? Because at the end of these two, at the end of the line, at the two ends of the line, the material is becoming equal, zero. Fill is becoming equal to cut. So that's why the diagram is crossing zero. So that means from A dash to D dash, it's a balance line. And from D dash to E dash, it's a balance line because it is crossing zero, meaning the cut is becoming equal to fill. OK, so whenever the diagram crosses zero, it becomes a balance point. And when you uh, join these balance points, it becomes a balance line. Similarly, you can make your own balance lines at other ordinates as well. It doesn't have to be zero all the time. You can make balance lines at any ordinate. For example, you see J and K. J and K, if you draw a line between J and K, it's also a balance, balance line. How? You see it's a horizontal line. That means the ordinate at J is equal to the ordinate at K. Okay. Now J, if you look at J, what is happening? The diagram is going downward. So when it is down, going downward, we have we are having fill sections. So this is J. Uh, the ordinate at J is basically a fill quantity. And if you look at K, the slope is going upward. So when it is going upward, the quantity is what what uh, is what cut quantity. So the ordinate at J and the ordinate at K are equal, but they are in two different directions. This one is for downward. This one is for upward. So downward is fill, so upward is cut. So the quantity at J is equal to quantity at cut, and this one is fill, and this one is uh, cut. Okay. So J and K also becomes a balance line. Similarly, S and T is also a balance line. Okay. Because again, it's a horizontal line, so the ordinates are equal as at S and T. At S, the diagram is going up, so it's a uh, cut ordinate, and at T. The diagram is going down, so it's a fill ordinate. So uh, at S and T, it's again a balance line. Okay. So any horizontal line on the mass hall diagram where the ordinates are equal or made equal can be called as a balance line because one end is showing the cut quantity, the other end is showing the fill quantity, and they are same ordinates. That means it is a balance line. Okay. This is what you said. OK, now the last point which I, will, I want to cover. So I said now this last point is very important, so pay attention. You should have covered it. You should already know it. But according to my experience, you guys need a serious. Refresh of your memory. OK, so I will uh, I will ask you to pay attention here. So I said D dash is a balance point, right? Because the line is crossing zero. And there are other balance points as well as T, J, and K, and so on. So I will just give you an example how to calculate the position of the balance point. Okay. So you see here, D dash is a balance point. Okay. And uh, this is at zero. Okay. Now where the line is crossing zero, if I come to the table, it the ordinate here is minus 299, the last negative ordinate, and the positive ordinate here is 201. So minus 299 is at 9 and 201 is at station 10. So 0 is between them. 0 is between them, right? Between minus 299 and 201 plus 201, there is a 0 point. OK, so this 0 point is between station 9 and station 10. But where is it exactly? I want to know the exact position, exact x value when y becomes 0. I want to know the exact x value in the diagram when y becomes zero. So for that we will do interpolation. The idea of interpolation is the basic equation is I will write down the basic equation here x minus 
x1 divided by y minus y1 equals x1 minus x2 divided by y1 minus y2. Now in this example, x is the value which I want. Okay, so I don't know x. x1 is the value previous to x. Okay, so if I come to the table, before x, which station I have? 9. I said x is between 9 and 10, right? So x1 is 9 and x2 is 10. So x minus 9 divided by x1 minus x2. So, no, sorry, y. Yeah, y1, y minus y1. So y at, at, at x, y should be 0. 0 minus y1. y1 is this one, the value at x1. So when x1 was 9, y was minus 299. So y1 becomes minus 299. So y minus y1, so minus minus will become positive, plus 299 equals x1 minus x2. So x1 is 9 and x2 is 10. Okay, around. So x1 is the one before x and x2 is the one after x. So 9 minus 10 divided by y minus y1. So uh, sorry, divided by y1 minus y2. Okay, so y1 is what we have at x1 and y2 is what we have at x2. Go to the table at x1, x1 is 9, y1 is minus 299, x2 is 10, and y2 is 201. So it is minus 299 minus uh, 201. Okay, so if you solve this equation, x is how much? Much it x? Yes, how much is X? Anyone? Nine point five something, right? 9.5 what? How much? Nine point five nine, right? So we'll take a nine point six. Okay, now remember there is nine point six stations, right? Nine point six stations. And each station is hundred feet. Okay, so nine point six means nine station and sixty feet, right? Point six. If one station is hundred, then point six stations are sixty feet. Okay, so we will write it as nine plus six zero nine stations and sixty feet. Okay, I, I took it, I rounded off to nine point six. Okay, so nine means nine stations, and point six means point six station is how much? One station is hundred feet, so point six station means sixty feet. So I wrote it nine plus sixty. Okay, so the position of D dash is nine plus sixty. OK, so this is how you do interpolation. So by interpolation, you can find out the uh, position of J and K and S and T, whatever points you want to have. OK, so uh, we will continue with some more calculations from this example, but 
make sure that interpolation is clear in your head and everything which you have done up till now is very clear because this will be used again and again, especially interpolation. If you don't know interpolation, you will have a lot of problems in chapter 15 and the previous chapters as well. Even in the previous chapters, there were some tables and figures and you have to do interpolation sometimes. You may have a question in the exam where you have to do interpolation from the table and from the figure. So interpolation should be clear. Do you have any questions? So as I said earlier, we have, uh, I have posted a assignment on Blackboard. You have to submit on Blackboard. It is important. And they, I have posted a form uh, in Teams. Okay, just go to back in the posts. You will see a form. Okay, and you have to fill the form. On the basis of your response, I will decide the schedule of classes the next week. Okay, so make sure you are filling the forms. Okay, so thank you. Assalamu alaikum. See you next week, inshallah.